Hi, my name's Dan Keen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. A couple of weeks ago, I released an instrument called the BLM Piano Toolkit, which was my first proper sort of commercial sample library. Um, it's about four and a half gigabytes in space, but has over a thousand samples of bright, looped, and muted samples. And I'm really, really pleased to say that in the one or two weeks since we released it, we've already raised over $300, which is amazing because this was a fundraiser principally uh, for the BLM movement and the Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust. Now, I was particularly excited to release this library, not only because of the fundraiser, which I do think is an absolutely fantastic cause, but the other side was also to kind of test the waters with these slightly deeper sampled instruments. And it seems, based on the initial sales, that there might be a slight kind of avenue that I could go down with that. And I'm going to talk about that more in a few videos time once I've kind of worked out a plan for how I'm going to do this. Now just a quick note on the Piano Toolkit, if you've already purchased the library but you have one of those fancy sustain pedals that has multiple values to, um, to the CC64 uh, regions. We actually encountered a problem that was kindly raised by Dave Smith, and thanks Dave for your comment because um, it meant that we can now issue out a sort of revision to that. So if you buy the library now, uh, it will come with that update, but if not, uh, contact me via the email down below and I'll, gr I'll gladly send you the revision to that um, if you're encountering problems with note releases. I wanted to create a demo for the site because I realised that there aren't actually many demos on there apart from the short walkthrough that I did. So I wanted to create a piece of music that used the beer toolkit as the kind of main instrument but then had all these other things going around it. This also stems from a video I did about two months ago called Writing Music Using the BBC SO Discover Library and what I particularly liked about that video was, I mean it was quite daunting, but just to be able to sit down and write a piece relatively quickly um, and demonstrate how useful and, and how easy it is to use that library. Um, it also attracted a kind of herd of followers who, um, who were interested in learning about orchestration and things like that. So I thought I would run this errand together with you and um, and basically just take you through how I would write a piece of music using the library and then supporting it around the outside with some other libraries. Now alongside the BLM Piano Toolkit I'm also going to be throwing in some other instruments. Some of these will be paid, I've got a couple of Spitfire libraries that I plan to use and then others are the Piano Book libraries and the Piano Book community is an absolutely wonderful source of free instruments if if you're looking for them, which I highly recommend that you do. So I'm gonna leave links to all of the libraries that I use down below, um, and do check out the creators, especially of the Piano Book Libraries, because there are some amazing developers uh, who are giving out free content. Um, and I'm, I'm so proud to be part of that community. So I'm just gonna write this piece and, um, and see how it goes. I've got my iPhone set up here, so I hope that looks okay. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so just before we get started, I'm going to show you this template that I've set up. I've got my BLM Piano Toolkit at the top. Today I'm going to be using the muted section. And then I've got a few keys instruments, which I'll go through as we go through this. I've got a keys hybrid zone, which has a few things from the Spitfire Swarm library and also my soft string spurs. And I've got a little sort of effects bus on that as well. And then I've got my string library. Now, a few people have asked questions about how I tend to set things up. Generally, what I'll do is I'll have two reverb sends. And in this case, I've got them set as bus 30 and 31. This one is the Quantum Leap Spaces. This is Berlin Church, 2.2 seconds. And then this one is the FabFilter Pro R, which is 2.5 seconds. They have a slightly different sound to each other, and so I like to get a fairly healthy blend. You'll notice at the end here as well, I'm also using an instance of Echo Boy, and this is just a delay that I want to use uh, in the case that I might just want things to kind of flourish for a little bit longer. Now, it's worth saying here that I'm using Sonarworks on my outputs, but you yourself won't be hearing that. So what you're hearing is directly dry from the piano itself. Now, I tend to record to a click most of the time, um, but with this, I don't think I will because I want it to feel quite kind of flowing and quite free. So with all that said and done, I'm just going to start playing this piece and... Um, a few of you have also asked about whether or not I sort of go through and score things up manually. Generally, uh, I tend to improvise, and if something comes out, then great. This will be a piano-centric sort of uh, piece, uh, but I plan to add some strings afterwards as well. So let's get started. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, there we go. Oh, I always get a bit nervous when writing a piece of music like this because, I don't know, there's, uh, there's something, it feels like people are watching me. I guess they are. So, I hope you like that piece. That's quite, quite a nice little melody. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do is sort of go through and decide which parts need a bit of backing to them. And for this, I'm going to use the John Meyer Antiquarian Echo, which he just released. which I just absolutely love, and it just keeps on going as well. I'm also going to be using the ambient guitar tremors. This is a piano book library, which again, I absolutely love. And then I've also got a couple of the Labs uh, piano pads. This is the lowered organ. And then a slightly more subtle one is the radio sound. And I thought that sounds relatively similar to my basic backdrops, so I also brought that one in as well. The only other thing to say is that the DK uh, BLM Piano Toolkit also comes with some loops, and so I've selected the second one here as well. Which I might use in the background. For now though, I'm just going to have a listen back to that. There are a couple of things that I didn't really like about it, um, and so we'll go over those now, just have a look, and um, yeah, let's see how it goes. So I've just taken uh, the just to give it a little bit of warmth there. I'm also going to add the antiquarian echo. I think the key is not sort of making things too busy too quickly, but that adds that kind of drony uh, sense of suspense. This is a totally different world. So let's have a look here. I really love the sound of this. John, if you're watching, good job, man. Great. 
Great. Really, really love that. It just kind of fills out the bottom end um, because this is this is an upright piano, so it doesn't really have the same kind of low end as you might get from a grand piano. Uh, I'm going to wait on the ambient textures for now. I think I'm going to add some basses. Let's just add it when the big when the big section comes in. And that's just going to keep going for a very long time. So I'm just going to have that playing like that. So I'll, I'll figure that out later. I'm not sure if I want it to go the whole way through. And I might do a similar thing that I did at the beginning. And that's when, that's when the BBC SO are going to take over. So let's just get this nice and quiet. And I'm actually going to automate a bit of volume in there because I like the kind of ebb and flow that we're creating already. Great. Okay. So as you can see, you know, the, the toolkit is, uh, is relatively easy to work with. Um, and it's just about kind of shaping things around it. Obviously, I want the toolkit to be the main kind of center point. And so I've chosen articulations that have a slightly bright sound to it because, you know, in contrast, the muted piano has quite a dull sort of, I guess, sunken quality to it. So let's just add a viola line because we can't go wrong with those. And you know what? I'm actually going to add this um, in this just adds a bit of a sheen on top. sure what's going to happen there yet.
That's okay. I'm not sure about this yet. Let's have a look. nice but I think we'll end on a different note Okay, so basically what I'm doing, <laughs> sorry for the slightly silent treatment there, basically what I'm trying to do is make it inevitable that we're going to end up back in G major. And so when I'm writing out these parts, I'm, I'm sort of just going towards the chords that are being played and then just finding sort of passing notes that might help accent this. So basically where we've, where we've been here, we're, we're happily in G. Then we go to the relative minor, which is E. And this is an A major chord, E minor, A major, and then we start this whole kind of A minor flourish. Now what I've got here is the high strings tenuto uh, consordino tasto swarm, but what I've done is I've turned it down, tuned it down by a 12 semitone, so by an octave, and so we get this 
everything's sort of been slowed down and stretched out. Um, so I'm going to just give this a little bit of a sheen on top. By that point that would have faded out so it's really really subtle but it just sort of adds a little bit of texture get out my trusty friend so this is the soft string spurs extras pack which is free from piano book again links are all down below this is the tremolo and i've turned up the colenio as well so just to get a bit of texture at the top and I'm sending this through my sort of string effects, which has an echo boy and then a crystallizer, which takes it up an octave with a delay. And then it's through this massive reverb as well, which is five seconds long. So yeah, let's really boost that. And you know what? I don't think I'm gonna add it until the D minor section. actually just going to use the very top. Actually that's too high. Very nice. Okay, let's add a bit more bass for this next section. I'm going to turn down the attack and the release. Nice. So I'm actually using a little bit of automation here. Um, I've used uh, CC1 to control the high pass filter. Maybe in this section, what do you think? Maybe I should add those loops as well, which are really creative. Yeah, that'd 
be nice. Again, just anything to make it sound inevitable that we're going to arrive there. Now I've realised that in this section here, it's a bit ambiguous. So I'm actually going to duck away here and uh, and just sort of hope that it brings out that kind of ambiguity. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull down the bases here. And this is something that I learned a while ago about just sort of playing with the listener a little bit. Um, so by that point, the violas can go out. If you take out the lower end, it just feels sort of a little bit ominous, you know? going to include this Aquarian Echo as well. Gotta work with these slightly lower down. They sound really, really great. I can't remember who it was who designed these, but absolutely amazing. Absolutely fantastic. That's going to really, really make this section. So thank you if you're watching uh, to the person who created that. Really, really nice. What's crazy about that library too is that I believe there's only one sample. So, absolutely incredible. Okay, um, what do you think? Do you like it? I like it, but I, maybe this tempo just needs to come up a tad.
I'm going to soften these strings right from the beginning because I feel like they're going to get in the way otherwise. And is it just me or does that whole tempo just need to slow down just a little bit there? Should we add a little line here? I love the control you have over these instruments. Um, if you use like really soft velocities, it brings out the portamento slides and it becomes very musical. Do -do 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 -do. That's not too bad. Nice. Okay.
Nice. Not everything in there was great, but it doesn't matter for now. You really want me to fix that now because if it's bugging you then I will do it. I think this is going to sound nice. I don't know what you're saying. And that goes on a little bit too long, doesn't it? So I'm going to extend this as well. Okay, 
So let me just sort of explain what I'm doing here. I just want to add a nice little flourish at the end. So I'm going to go into my swarms and find something nice. That's very nice. That is pretty delicious, nutritious, and seven of your ten a day. Of course, we don't want to be screaming it from the rooftops. Let's have a listen through from the beginning and uh, see what we think. Now we've just got to match everything up so it sounds really, really nice. Um, so that's where it is, and let's just check on this. Um, I think it's pretty close actually, but okay. Because again, we don't want to preempt, so I'm going to line it up. We can probably give this a bit more, can't we? So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it to be useful, uh, informative. Let me know if you want me to do more videos like this because I really enjoy composing live and it actually makes me work more quickly. Um, if you are still watching at the end, uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.